Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, my name is The Eclectic Witch. I post monthly tarot readings for the star signs, pick a pile tarot readings and witchy related content as well, like this video today. So this video is about my witchy altar setup for Yule celebrating the winter solstice. So um, I went on a bit of a, a personal crafty journey doing this video and um, making this video because I didn't think it was going to be as big and as elaborate as it is when I first started. So I was really inspired to celebrate Yule, the winter solstice and I guess celebrate being a witch and I wanted to also connect with others as well. So. Um, I went with a couple of really close friends that I consider family um, of mine to my local city, Melbourne, where we um, celebrated Yule and we did a ritual and we burnt our intentions, we did a meditation and we also ate some really wholesome, beautiful food together. So it really, really inspired me to do my own little thing at home because I really wanted to sort of start getting into, I guess, the celebrations and things and what it means to be a witch. And for me, what it means to be a witch or a Wiccan, I use the words interchangeably, um, is that it's very much about connecting with nature, um, with the energies of nature, and also, I guess, our history, our past. Like, if you think about in ancient times how winter was really really hard like you had to store food it, it was really really cold it was a time of going indoors and lighting lots of candles and you know this is a in the southern hemisphere for us and Yule we're celebrating um, the the longest night and the shortest day and the return of the light the Sun so a lot of ancient pagan traditions excuse me, itchy nose, um, it's, it's about celebrating the return and the birth of the sun um, and the, the goddess is um, going from Samhain, which is um, her crone stage, back to her mother stage and then she births the sun um, or the horned god and um, it's about the return of the light. So also there's the, the fighting kings as well as the holy king and the oak king and um, it's also looked at as the, the two parts that make up the horned god or the, sun, or the sun god, where the oak king, the light, is coming back at this time and um, he is conquering during this time. And then the holy king um, conquers during the, um, from the summer solstice sort of thing. So it's very interesting, the stories. I'm just getting into the stories and things like that and how some of the celebrations have come about. So forgive me if I, I, um, I stumble a little bit because I'm still learning, but um, I'm, I really, I'm really finding it fascinating. So, okay, so back to my altar. Right, so <laughs> I started off, I, I went to um, uh, a, a farm, which is um, my family's farm, and we were looking for logs and stuff so in ancient times you know the, the man or the father and the sons used to go and haul a great log into the house and it was burnt um, during Yule every year and they would save um, some some remains and some some parts of the log to burn again for the next year so here's my Yule log but I'm not going to be burning it um, I'm going to be using it every year and I've wanted to start a tradition in um, our family and I was talking about this with my partner that we could use this as our Yule log every year during the winter solstice. I want to use this Yule log for the winter solstice every year because this was a lot of hard work. <laughs> so it's a, um, it's a native gum, this one here, and I found it on the ground and there was um, <laughs> I retrieved the log and um, all the little crawlies, so it went, went out. And um, then I, I sort of cleaned it up because it was full of dirt, like it was just covered in dirt. And, um, and I carved these here. I'm so proud of myself because I'm not good with sharp tools. These little circles, um, 
because as you can see the log is quite round and the candles weren't going to sit properly on there and I just flattened it off with a chisel and I created my log so this was the this is like it. today is the 21st so it's the winter solstice here in the southern hemisphere today so I was very proud of myself that I got all this done by today <laughs> And, um, and then I decorated it with some seed lights around and everything. So I'm just very, very proud of my log. And I'm going to pass it on. Uh, we agreed that we're going to pass it on to our children. And hopefully it could stay in the family as our Yule log that we can celebrate with. That is native um, to us here in the Southern Hemisphere in Australia. In Australia. Okay. So I did that. And I also got some pine. And I've got some evergreens. And with my wreath here too. So a lot of pine cones all around, which is very much um, symbolizing the, the stages of life of rebirth and transformation and the evergreens. Um, I also believe in, in ancient times was used to ward off spirits. They would hang it um, on the doors um, in, uh, in the doors, like the entrances to the home. So it to ward off any negative energies or bad spirits as well. What I really found fascinating actually about holly um, in particular, so again, I can see it here. Oh, just, yeah. Holly. So the spiky parts of the leaves of holly um, were also um, there to ward off any bad spirits too. And it was a really, really great sign of protection to have um, holly. And when it was soaked in water as well, it would be poured onto a newborn's head um, foreheads and things and would be uh, also a really great protective I guess ointment you could sort of say or protective um, fluid that was um, really great to protect newborns and things so it was very interesting about holly another very protective uh, plant as well so you can see here that a lot of the evergreens and things that is around on yule altars is very much about transformation birth and regeneration like the evergreens because they stay green it was a symbol of like long-lasting life and things like that too and as you can see here too we've got lots of candles lots of light so this is the time of year that we're bringing light to the darkness as well and I felt that it was really beautiful to have lots of lights around especially around the wreath um, as well so and also traditionally the colors are red, gold, white. And um, as you can see, we've got very much a lot of symbolism that is a particular time of year, which is Christmas as well. So looking at Christmas and Yule and seeing the similarities and things, it's the celebration of the death, the rebirth and transformation of life. And apparently in ancient times, why Christmas was uh, brought in at that time was to try and entice some of the pagan followers to to convert to Christianity so that was something that I did not know and I was like okay that's fascinating but really if we think about it from a holistic perspective um, the celebration of dirt um, the celebration of birth death and life in general the cycle of life is that we're we collectively are wanting to celebrate this at this time of year. We want to bring hope um, as well that the that there's going to be um, a lot more light that comes back into our lives again. But I really think it's important to also appreciate the winter and the cold and for what it is. Like for me, like it, I always. I used to always think, oh, I just want to go to the warmth. I just want to go to the warmth. I want to go up north of Australia where it's really hot and there's still lots of sun around and a lot of warmth. But I think it's about appreciating some of the darker parts of ourselves and the darker parts of life and that this is the natural progression and journey through life. The times get cold and, you know, we've got more time to sort of be with our families or be with our friends and we can put some logs on the fire, we can burn some candles and it's something really nurturing and that I think is really nice about celebrating this time is that, yeah, it's a bit cold, but this is, this is normal. This is what, this is the cycles that we go through with nature and I guess it's appreciating nature for what it is um, as well that 
in nature you know they're with like the animals that some of them that go into hibernation or go into torpor torpor i think it's called as well and they're regenerating and they're, they're conserving their energies and it's a time for us to conserve our energies as well and think about the birth of new beginnings and what do we want to bring into our lives so today for for me personally with the winter solstice um, I've got some incense burning with some dragon's blood and some frankincense and um, I'm really connecting with my deity that I recognize in my practice which is Hecate. Here I've got a statue of her and um, and this statue also represents the the triple goddess so the mother the maiden and the crone and it's very much the cycle of the wheel the wheel of the year the cycle where the the goddess goes through all her cycles as well so it's really is a, i find that hecate for me as a deity i know that she's greek mythology as well but i believe a god or a goddess or deity comes to you when you can really learn something off that deity and I believe that we're so interconnected that even though this that Hecate comes from Greek mythology, um, she still has a place within my my beliefs or my Wiccan traditions um, that uh, that she is helping me on my journey of becoming a witch because um, she's very much a goddess of witchcraft and she knew a lot about poisonous herbs and things like that. So um, for my practice and coming to where I'm at in my journey now, she's really, really helped me. And I really think that for any of you out there who is really worried about, um, oh, you know, I really like this deity and I really want to work with this deity, don't be too concerned about what traditions or faiths or things that they come from. If that deity is calling to you, it's for a reason. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. And Who's to say what's wrong in your own personal practice, you know, as a witch or a Wiccan? Okay, so um, for me, what I'm going to do with uh, burning my incense here is I'm going to write down what I want to attract um, into my life going forward and what I'm looking forward to um, in the coming months as the sun returns and the warmth of the light returns. And it's um, really yeah it's it's a really nurturing experience i really love doing it with others but i felt called to do it myself on the day of the of the winter solstice as well so yeah so um another thing too with um this my my cloth my altar cloth here this cloth was six dollars from the opportunity shop <laughs> so it's not to say that you have to um, spend a lot of money on all your things on your altar because if you think about in ancient times that the altars were created a lot from natural elements and natural elements hold a really beautiful energy when it comes to your altar spaces and I did talk about this in one of my altar videos that in your, on your altar space if you can place as much meaningful or natural items on there as possible it's really going to to serve you a lot better to have natural elements so like i noticed when i was walking past my room that um i could smell all the native plants that were here and it just smelled great and i really got me thinking too when i was collecting um different leaves and different branches and things um, of what some of the evergreens are and what keeps beautifully green even when, when it is um, you know away from its tree branches and um, off the actual tree itself and what actually stays green and gets you thinking about nature in so many different ways so um, yeah like having lots of lights red gold white green is some of the beautiful colors that is you'll and um, yeah, I hope that seeing all this inspires you to do something similar because I want to actually use this wreath and I keep it up there now that I've got it for all the different um, seasons and things and decorate it for all the different seasons. So I'm going to have finally an ever-changing altar because 
really most of the time I keep my altar the same and of the same cloth and the same things on there but I thought no I'm going to have a an altar that is going to be interchangeable and I'm going to put some effort into it so um, yeah going back to deities just quickly too you might want to have leave some offerings around for your deity you may want to have a central part for your deity there like I've got the log in front here and um, this is this just some ideas like I know some some of you are practicing on your own in solitary and um, you need it needing to hide your practice a little bit like I've had to do that before as well so you can do this on such a smaller scale as well just have some pine cones maybe have some evergreens um some candles some light like it doesn't have to be a big elaborate thing but for the sake of this video today and to show you like um, all this effort I've put in finally this year, um, I, I thought this might inspire some of you to, to celebrate your, celebrate the winter solstice. So yeah, so um, taking some time, I, I recommend for some meditation, some self-reflection because it is the rebirth of the new. And um, also if, it's a really good time for fertility, being it like the goddess being in her mother face as well. Um, so if, if you're wanting to birth new projects, if you're wanting to birth new um, ideas, if you're wanting to actually have um, children as well, it's a great time to be nurturing that side of yourself. And um, really great time of reflection and introspection to some meditation and thinking about um your ideas for the future and what you want to bring into your life and celebrating like with gift giving it's a really great time to show compassion um, to others through gifts and um, even like beautiful home cooked food like warm hearty soups is a great way to um, to really connect with like family and friends as well and celebrating that you know that even though we're in this time where it's cold and we want to be indoors that we're still connecting with each other and showing compassion for each other as well so it's a great time to to really come together because you think about ancient times when it was cold and they had to huddle together and they were probably surrounded around fireplaces and things like that and they were sharing really um beautiful hearty type food as well really nourishing food like this is a great time of year to really do all of this so um yeah but um i hope this video has inspired you today and um thank you so much for um watching it to the end and um i would really love to hear some of um the things that you're doing to celebrate yule um whether you're um, a solitary uh, witch or Wiccan or whether you're celebrating with others I'd love to hear what you do so thank you so much and I'll talk to you soon